Qasim's ice cream shop in Gaza City has now reopened. A cup or a cone costs two shekels. That's 35p. The wait is worth it. It is a small reward for surviving four weeks of airstrikes and explosions. It's good to see uh, stop the bombards. It's good to see everybody uh, go to market, go to his work, go to his job. It's uh, very bad to see a lot of men in the hospital uh, without hands, without uh, legs. Four-year-old Musa Sakala in the red shirt wants to make sure his order is not forgotten. He holds his ground and gets his ice cream. It's the family's first outing since the truce. Musa has had leukemia. He still gets treatments in a hospital in Israel. His parents find themselves depending upon the same country that bombs their land. The Israeli doctors are professional and humane. They even call us during this war to ask how our son was. But the Israeli army is different. What they have done to our children is barbaric. How do you even begin to clean up here in Gaza? The Shajaya neighborhood was torn up by Israel's offensive. I want to give you a sense of where we are and of what's happened here. Israel itself is in that direction where the fields are. And for almost a month, the Israeli Air Force and then the Israeli Army carried out strikes across the border here into Gaza. And this is the Shajaya neighborhood. And the destruction here is immense. Wherever you look, buildings have been either hit or they've got bullet holes in them, windows have been blown out, and there is rubble all around me. Israel's army says it went against this neighborhood because it believed that Palestinian militants were digging tunnels from here to go across the border into Israel and that those militant groups led by Hamas were also carrying out rocket strikes from here. Of course those militants were hit but also when you stand here you realize that many many civilians will have been hit as well. This was their home. Afaf Sarsak shows us round the remains of her house. She has eight children. She has to find them a new home. Israel says that she and her neighbors should blame Hamas for the war, but they don't. God be with them. They are stronger now. I hope that God will help the resistance to win and to declare victory. The armed men of Gaza see themselves as winners. This afternoon, gunmen from Islamic Jihad buried one of their commanders. No one here is pressing the militant groups to give way. For the first time in almost a month, people here are able to take some steps back towards a normal life. Here they're getting money to buy things for their families. But they want so much more than that. They want the ability to come and go from Gaza, the ability to get things in from the outside world and they want Israel to end its restrictions. And that is the same demand that Hamas itself is making of the Israeli government in indirect negotiations. In the harbor, fishermen are slowly getting back to work. There are a lot of fish here now because fishing was banned for a long time. It was very dangerous for fishermen, so we hope that the calm will continue. For now, fishermen and swimmers enjoy the quiet. But the recent history of Gaza teaches a simple lesson. Calm is eventually followed by another war.